You're listening to LIU Sports Radio, the home of the LIU Sharks. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Steinberg Wellness Center in downtown Brooklyn, the home opener for the LIU Sharks. Matt Weinstein, Mikey Domagala here with you. Men's basketball tip-off. Both these teams 0-1. It's LIU. And coming into their court today, the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell. Mikey, for the very first time you're here next to me, we're in for a good one. Matt, this is going to be a good one indeed. LIU's coming off a tough loss. They're a little, a little down on men. They only played six guys. Ashton Clark, I was very impressed with his performance last game off the bench. 21.6 rebounds. Let's see what he could do with a rejuvenated lineup this game. That's right. Ashton Bradley, the only guy who came off the bench. They only had six guys. A short bench. We'll, get, we'll let you know in just a moment. But Bradley, a career game in 29 minutes. The senior off the bench, 21 points, six boards. He made seven field goals. He was 5 of 15 from deep. And the three-pointers, Mikey, you live and die by him. We see that at all levels of basketball. And for LIU, that seems to be the same type of game plan this year. This past Tuesday, that game at URI, number four preseason in that Atlantic 10 conference, LIU shot just 29.5% from deep, 13 makes, but 44 attempts from deep. That breaks a 20-year record in three-point attempts for LIU. Matt, what I would say about that is because they were shorthanded, because they were tired, because they were locking a lot of minutes, they were looking to knock down the three ball and get back in the game. And what it looked like was they had dead arms. They couldn't get the ball up. That's why they missed the school record of three-pointers in that game. And now, Mikey, well, obviously we, we alluded to the short bench this past Tuesday. Raekwon Clark is back today. The, the all-conference first-teamer last season, the consensus all-conference preseason guy this year he led the northeast conference with 18.9 points per game last year he sat, had to sit out that first game of the season to get this first year, this last year of eligibility back obviously he was a walk-on way back when in his first year he ended up red shirting he gets this year back he had to sit out game one but he's back raekwon clark is back in the lineup but one guy mikey who liu is going to miss all season is the big man in the middle number 11 iral penn they're going to miss him all right they're going to start playing some small ball in 29, 29 games last year, he started all of them averaging 7.6 points and 4.5 rebounds per game. They're going to miss his production in the front court. Penn at six foot seven, 185, was the big man in the middle, which allowed Ty Flowers to play the four for LIU. Raekwon Clark was able to play the three, and Clark is a bigger guy. He stands, he stands six foot six at 195. He's built a little bit bigger than your average small forward. So, but he's got the handles like a guard, so he could come back outside, dribble, bring it back inside. But now he's going to be forced to play a lot of power forward this season. So LIU, again, is going to look a little bit smaller this year. Obviously, the backcourt's still intact of Julian Batts and Jay Sean Augusto. We'll get you that in just a moment. But first, got to take a look over at their opponent today, the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell. They lost their first game of the season earlier this week as well. They played in-state rival Massachusetts, leading the way for them last game. It was Obadiah Noel, the junior guard out of Frederick, Mass., Mikey Obadiah, 15, uh, excuse me, 18 points and four boards. He shot 50% from the entire field, 7 of 14. He was looking good last game, and I'm not sure how LIU is going to deal with him. He's a beast in the paint. LIU's a li not short-handed this year, but they're short. So I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to play zone D to stop him. He looked very strong in the first game. And Noel at plays the two guard. A little bit of point guard as well. He stands six foot four. You know, Bats and Augusto in the backcourt for LIU, both just six foot. But tip off coming in just a few moments. First off, we're going to take a quick break right here on LIU Sports Radio. Hi, this is Nina Held of Senior Moments. Next time on our show, we'll be joined by Taylor Herbert and Randy Height, two certified social workers from the Sid Jacobson Y, the JCC. And we will be discussing their areas of expertise in cancer care and dementia and other related illnesses. Friday morning at 9 on LIU Public Radio. 
America's favorite holiday tradition for over 30 years comes to the Tillis Center. Experience the magic of Mannheim Steamroller Christmas live at the Tillis Center on Saturday, December 7th. Enter for your chance to win a pair of tickets by visiting WCWP.org now through November 29th. That's Mannheim Steamroller Christmas by Chip Davis live at the Tillis Center Saturday, December 7th at 8 p.m. Enter to win a pair of tickets now through November 29th at WCWP.org. Hi, this is Tony Chiwarno, the host of the Monday night edition of The Rock Show. 4F, free format for free. 4F is a naked, no-holds-barred dive into the charted and uncharted musical waters of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughts, and now. So join me Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m. and dive in with us. The water's fine. This is 88.1 FM WCWP Brookville, the home of the LIU Sharks. Gentlemen, welcome back. Coming to you live from that Steinberg Wellness Center, downtown Brooklyn, Mount Weinstein, and Mikey Dolan Gallup. Here for the home opener of the LIU men's basketball 2019 20 season. UMass Lowell, the Riverhawks, LIU, the Sharks. Mikey, let's get to some starting lineups. So, the starting lineups at the one guard, Jordan Owens. At the two, Obadiah Noel. At the three, Josh Gantz. At the four, Christian Lute. At the five, Darius Henderson holding down the middle. And now, Mikey, for those LIU Sharks. LIU Sharks, guard Julian Batts. Guard Deshaun Augusto. For the front court, Vershawn Cotton. Raekwon Clark and Ty Flowers. The head coaches for both these teams. For LIU in his third season at the helm, head coach Derek Kellogg. Kellogg in his third season, he coached eight years at UMass. Not to be confused with UMass Lowell, but UMass actually the team that Lowell played in their first game of the season. And for Lowell, their head coach in his seventh season, Pat Duquette. So Kellogg and Duquette, they're ready to see their teams get started tonight, Mikey. And now one thing that you have to know for these LIU Sharks, that three man in the starting lineup tonight for Sean Cotton, obviously just six foot two, he's more of a guard, but they're, they're playing in the three guard lineup. Cotton, a transfer from the University of Akron, he sat out all last season due to those NCAA transfer regulations. So this is the first taste for, for Sean Cotton in the blue and gold of LIU. Cotton's not happy, he's ready to go. He spent all last year watching, now he's ready to shoot up. He's ready to, he's ready to go. He put up seven points, he didn't shoot too well, only two of 13 last game. Again, he's not happy, he's ready to go, locked in, ready to have a bounce back game for the LIU Sharks. And not only is Kyle, you mentioned he's ready to go, he's locked in, all these guys are locked in, this home opener. You hear this thunderous crowd here at the oh, yeah. Wellness Center. The thing about, the good thing about Khan is he's playing, and they have to play small ball, he's at the three. But the good thing, he has a lot of experience playing with all-star big men. He's, he's playing with the four, at the four and five. He's got Ty Flowers and excuse me, Raekwon Clark and Ty Flowers at the four and five to throw these lobs to, yep. to throw the ball down low. Well, back in high school, his senior year at legendary Hillcrest Prep in Phoenix, Rashad Cotton shared the floor with none other than 2018 number one overall pick in the NBA draft, DeAndre Ayton of the Phoenix Suns. If you if you part this guy with another center, they could be dominant. As they were in high school, DeAndre Ayton, there's a reason why he went number one. He had him throwing lobs. Let's see what they can do tonight. Cotton is thunderous, and he's getting the start tonight. Obviously, Cotton would look to be about that sixth man for the LIU Sharks this season, but obviously because Hiral Penn is out with the injury, the arm infection that's going to leave him out all season, Flowers and Clark slide down to the four and five, and for Sean Cotton, he's at the three today, joined by LIU Sharks backcourt, Jay Sean Augusto and Julian Batts, the, excuse me, the pair of overclassmen, Batts the senior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Jay Sean Augusto, the junior out of Seattle, Washington, a two-time state champion in high school at Garfield. So Ty Flowers ready to go. He's ready to take the tip with Darius Henderson. LIU in their home whites, blue numbering and gold trim. UMass Lowell 
the Royal Blues. White numbering, red trim are underway. The tip is won by the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell. 20 minutes on the clock in this first half. Obadiah Noel on the left side. At the wing, he's meant by Cotton. It looks almost like a 2-3 zone for LIU. Flowers, the big man in the middle. It's Noel in the corner off the pass. Clark can test. His three is no good. Off front rim and out. Very good ball movement to get that shot out. Let's see what LIU could do here. Flowers quickly up the floor to transition. He gives it over to Cotton. His three-point attempt just a bit shot. So both teams trading Eric threes thus far. And it's Owens at the top of the key. In the corner, he finds Lutet. His three-pointer is short. It's looking like a 3-2 zone, Matt, not a 2-3. LIU's going with the 3-2. So Augusto looks to get inside, a foul is called, I believe that's going to be on the floor. It's a push off against Jordan Owens of UMass Lowell. A little timeout here, looks like he's got to tie his shoe real quick. So Clark will tie his shoe, so the foul called against Jordan Owens, first team foul for the UMass Lower River Hawks. Augusto on the inbound to Raekwon Clark. Rips it through, tries to go baseline on the right side, looks to hand it off, but it gets deflected. I believe it's off of Josh Gantz. Either way, it is off Lowell. It'll remain LIU basketball with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. He got a little trapped there. Let's see what they could do with the run around screen. Somebody's coming for a shot. So Julian bats off the inbound. Now Flowers has it in the corner, looks to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now he's double, kicks it out to Clark. And he gets inside, hop step. He's not going to get away with that one. The travel call on Raekwon Clark. Mikey, after all that, no shot attempt for LIU. No shot attempts. It looks like he got bumped by number four, Darius Henderson of Lowell. Forced him into the travel. Jay Sean Augusto and Flowers pressing in the backcourt. Two on two. Jordan Owens of UMass Lowell finally able to get across half court. Augusto. Has a man, it's a one-on-one -on -one set. Raekwon Clark contests with a two-on-one break for LIU. Augusto up in traffic, he hits the deck hard, no foul. No foul, as Lutet sent him to the ground. Both of them got bumped on both ends. No foul at all from either ref. And now at the top of the key, it's Lutet. But an offensive foul called against UMass Lowell. Jay Shaw, excuse me, Julian Bass hits the deck. Second foul called against the Riverhawks. He saw him coming, he planted his feet, going the other way. A minute and a half into this first half of action, still no score, Mikey. LIU is 0 for 2 from the field, UMass Lowell is 0 for 3. You want to call it bad decisions or can't make shots? Let's see what we got here. It's just heavy defensive pressure here, the up and under for Rick Watt Clark, and the crowd loves it here at Steinberg. Nice little baby hook in the post, coming left side, right across the middle, switch. Ty Flowers in transition, tips the pass to himself and lays it in. A quick four-point swing for LIU. Suffocating defense nothing. from the start. Darius Henderson, the forward, playing up top, finally coughs it up over to Obadiah Noel. He gets doubled by Cotton and Clark. The three-point attempt is very short from Henderson. Flowers has it, Augusto over to Clark. He flushes it down two-handed. Six to nothing, LIU, and a timeout called by U. Their defense is why it's a 6 0 game right now. Not only are they getting stopped, but they're trapping them in corners and forcing them into turnovers. They got two po four points in transition already, so defense leads to offense. Exactly. You take the horse right out of my mouth. Good defense is going to get you good offense. That is where it's going to have to start for LIU. Obviously, you know, maybe 30, 45 basketball seconds ago, we're talking about neither of these teams have put, have put a ball in the basket. You missed low on the time with 0 for 3. LIU was 0 for 2 with a turnover. They weren't even getting the shots up. They had that long possession, no shot attempt, the foul, the turnover. But the transition, the defense turns into transition offense. Ty Flowers, the wingspan of Flowers, gets himself into almost every play. He's six foot nine playing the five for LIU. And here's Rachel. Here's Ray Cron Clark doing his part. Running in transition, already four points. He's coming out to win this game. Exactly. Clark fired off the bench here to start this game because he couldn't play in game one. Henderson, the finger roll, can't finish the lay-in. From Obadiah Noel, he cleans it up. First bucket for Lolo at 6-2 LIU. Augusto on the near sideline. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Owens. Straight on the right side from Flowers. Augusto over to Cotton, back in the middle of the court. Screen from Clark. Pick and pop. He looks to spot up. 
One triple from the right elbow. Oh, back iron. Down through the bottom. Eight to two, LIU. Clark now with six points. Three for three from the field as well. Quickly up the floor is Lutet, but he's stopped by Jay Sean Augusto. The three-point attempt is Eric from Owens. Another rebound for Ty Flowers. That's his fifth of the game. Transition feed to Clark. He lays it in. Eight points from Clark, all in the transition except that one two. And now back up the floor. The three point attempt from Obadiah Noel finds the bottom of the net. They cut the lead to five. NYU still leads 10 5. 16 and a half left to play here in half number one. We got a fast game here, Matt. They're really pushing it up and down the floor. So Jay Sean Augusto on the near side yet again. Screen on the right side from Lake Juan Clark. Off the back door cut is Julian Batts. Finally, he finds Rashawn Cotton. Shot clock at 12. Clark at the free throw line. Lobs it up for Flowers. He comes back down. And one. Flowers with his second bucket of the game. He'll go to the line for one more. He just used all 6'9 of his frame, his long arms, his big body inside. Put it right up over the defender. Two points and one. So Flowers will shoot the first free throw of the game for either side. We have the first substitution of the game, Mikey. Ashton Bradley, the senior swingman for LIU, comes in. Julian Batts will take a seat. Bradley played in 12 games last year, Matt. He averaged 5.1 points per game, 1.2 rebounds per game. He put up a career-high 18 points last year. Let's see what kind of bench impact he could make tonight. He broke that career-high earlier this week in game one with those 21 points, five threes. Ty Flowers... Converts on the free throw and then finally forces the ball out of bounds. It will go back to the Sharks as it was coughed up by Jordan Owens right in front of his own bench. Already the third turnover from Lowell. Just about four minutes into the game. You got that many turnovers. It's not going to look too good. Jay Sean Augusto running the point. Kicks it out. Flowers extending his range. The right elbow three-point attempt. No good. A rebound from Obadiah Noel. He'll come up the floor with a little bit of speed. Looks to split the middle. But Cotton and Bradley in the 2-3 will stop him. A reach-in foul called against Rashawn Cotton. Of the, thir of the 13 points, it's only Flowers and Clark right now. They're, doing, they're leading the pack. They got all the points. Let's see who else can get into it. And now, Mikey, we have our first media timeout here of this game. 15 minutes, 54 seconds remaining in this first half. Still plenty of basketball. 13 to 5, LIU leads. Mikey, like I said, this is a 40 minute game. Just four minutes and six seconds off the clock. It is thunderous here at the Steinberg Wellness Center. Off to the races are Clark and Ty Flowers in transition thus far. LIU as a team is six of nine from the field. The reason why Lowell is down right now is because they're only two of eight. One for five from three. They're trying to make a break the three-pointer, and it's not working. Let's see what else they can get going. And, Mikey, you mentioned the six of nine for LIU. If you remember correctly, they started this game over two for the field. They played five of their last six shots, half of which coming in transition. Again, you cannot stress enough, defense, defense, defense will lead to good offense for the LIU Sharks. They lead by eight early on. Now, Mikey, obviously... LIU playing in their second game of the season, a non-conference game. They have plenty of them before the conference schedule starts around the first, second week of January. But LIU in the Northeast Conference, preseason number one in the NEC. I also saw ESPN rank them number one. So ESPN, Bleacher Report, all these websites have them finishing and coming through. It's looking good right now, Matt. First five minutes into this game, it's looking good. LIU fell in the Northeast Conference semifinals last season after a 500 year. They were about middle of the pack, but they've brought every single contributor back. They graduated one senior. All of their starters are back, obviously with the exception of Iral Penn with the arm infection. He's out for the year. Both teams back on the floor. Ron Mitchell checks in for UMass. Lowell three-point attempt is good for Obadiah and Owell. Side of the timeout, they cut the lead to five. So Jay Sean Augusto back up the floor for LIU, 13 to eight. Augusto over to Flowers. He's met by Josh Gates. Cotton has it. Clark spotting up, down low, comes up, screen and roll. Augusto keeps it. Reverse layup puts it in. Augusto putting the ball on the floor again. Another steal by Flowers off the inbound. Another conversion and. Flowers will go back to the line. Another four-point swing for LIU. Maybe not even four, potentially five. All in about three seconds' time. Great awareness by them on defense. 
Lions get the steal. Boom, right up at one. Second steal of the game for Ty Flowers. Already seven, could be eight points with the a free throw attempt here. He converted on his first one. Three of four from the field, five boards, an assist, and two steals. Flowers converts. He's perfect, two of two from the line. So that full line, eight points, three of four from the field, two of two from the line, five boards, an assist, and two steals. But the defense from Flowers is really what's made the difference oh, yeah. thus far. He's pressing, he's back on offense, using his length to deflect balls, steal balls, running transition. A very dynamic player. Obadiah Noel gets around Cotton, kicks it out. Reverse layup, no good from Ron Mitchell. Flowers with his sixth rebound of the game. Long cross-court pass, Augusto has trouble handling it. It's taken away by Josh Gantz, a two-on-two -two break. The transition three rattles home for Christian Lutet. He could have attacked the paint. Three on two for Lowell. He decided to pull up for three. LIU still leads 18 to 11. 14 and a half left in the first half. LIU currently shooting eight of 11 from the field. Cotton now has it on the right side. Goes against the screen from Flowers. Looks to dish it off to Clark. But it'll roll out of bounds into the pep band behind the basket. It will remain LIU basketball underneath their own bucket with 16 left on the shot clock. Ty Flowers is doing what he has to do. Running in transition, deflecting all the balls he can, and he's pressing. He's the tallest man on the floor right now, and he's pressing. He's playing all 94 feet, Mikey. And now a screen on the right side from Flowers. Clark, step back, jumper behind his back at the free throw line, connects. He can't miss. That's his 10th point. Perfect field goal percentage, five to five. He also has an assist to go along with it. 20 to 11 the score. But Lutet crosses his way onto the layup. 20 to 13, LIU still up 11. Augusto running the point here. Retreats to half court. 14 minutes to play. Looks like they're going to try to run a play here. Basically their first time in the half court. Everything's been transitioned. Quick buckets. So Clark with the backdoor screen allows Cotton to get free at the top of the key. They're running it for Bradley. He has to dish it back out to Cotton. Shot clock at six. Cotton goes all the way. Scoop layup. The cliffhanger won't fall as Lutet with the rebound. Lutet trying to bang with Raekwon Clark. The foul's going to be called on the floor. I believe it will be against none other than Raekwon Clark. That'll be his first. So, Matt, it's looking like Bowles playing a 2-3 defense. Oh. Substitution here. Jermaine Jackson coming in for the LIU Sharks. He'll take the spot of Rashawn Cotton. So, Jackson, another guy, he wasn't medically cleared to play in game one, but he's making his his. LIU debut tonight. He, he was a freshman last year, transferred from Detroit Mercy, but he did sit out the entire year. So he's making his collegiate debut here from Shelby Township, Michigan. The dump off pass. They got numbers. Connor Withers couldn't handle it for UMass Lowell. He just checked into the game as well. Jermaine Jackson picks it back out to Bradley. Augusto will run the offense. Flowers potentially with a screen on the left side. Augusto goes against it, a reach-in foul called against Ron Mitchell of Lowell. He's getting a little too defensive happy there, a little too much reaching in, but it looked like he was about to dance on him and go straight through the lane. That's the only way he could have stopped it. Fifth team foul for Lowell. Seven will put them in the one and one. Here we are, about seven minutes into the game. A lot of turnovers, a lot of fouls. Let's see what Lowell can do. LIU up 20 to 13. Clark on the left side, screen, pick and pop with Jermaine Jackson. Clark sizing up his defender. He cannot miss. Three pointers good from Clark. He has 13, six of six. That's his first triple. And quickly coming up the floor is Obadiah Noel, kicks it out. Three point attempt is no good. From Lutet, the trailer. Raekwon Clark is on fire right now. Raekwon, it doesn't matter that defense is in front of him. He's hitting spot-up twos now. All of his points in the beginning were transition. Now he's putting it on the floor, taking some layups, hitting some jumpers. And Mikey, he's a six foot six. He's, he's six foot six, 195 pounds. He looks like a forward. He's got the motor and the touch of a guard. And Jay Sean Augusto off to the dump off from Flowers. His shot deflected a bit off the hand of a Riverhawk from Lowell. It'll remain LIU basketball. They'll run it underneath. If you're looking at the floor as an eye test, it looks like LIU is much bigger than they are. Quickly, the dump off to Clark. He lays it in yet again. Now seven of seven from the field. 15 points for Clark. 
in just eight minutes of play. 25-13. Clark has 15 points. Lowell as a team only has 13. They'll match that as Connor Withers, the freshman forward, puts in a little runner. 25-15. The LIU Sharks lead UMass Lowell. Jermaine Jackson in his collegiate debut. Hands it off to Augusto. Kicks it out. Clark couldn't handle it. He had some room to put up the three. But now he'll have to dish it back out. Augusto has it. Shot clock at 10. Augusto met by Withers. Little bit of a mismatch. Wants to put it on the ground. Pass it over to Jackson. Barely saved. Walking a tightrope. Somehow oh! Flowers comes up with it. The tomahawk with the left hand. He may have got away with a bit of a travel. Oh, yeah. Ty Flowers, though, right into the paint. Left-handed. Putting it on his head. Ty Flowers now has 10. Mitchell looks to gather, but he gets called for a walk. 27 to 15, the LIU Sharks lead it. 11 and a half left to play until halftime. Mikey, we're going to step aside for a quick break here. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the first half of action between the LIU Sharks and the River Half Hawks of UMass Lowell. You're listening to LIU basketball right here on LIU Sports Radio. Howdy, folks. I'm Rick Mussini, along with my co-host, Brian Pemberton. Ho! And we're the hosts of Rick's Redneck Ranch Radio. Every Saturday evening, we'll be bringing you classic and outlaw country music. So grab your gal, some good whiskey, and a fine cigar, and listen every Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. right here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Or get the free WCWP radio app and tune in every Saturday. Hi, I'm Artie. That's short for artificial intelligence. I'm kind of a big deal these days. There's not much that I can't do. I can even do promos. Pretty soon I'll be making the music you hear on the radio. Until then, you can listen to The Rock Show on WCWP. With a fresh voice and an eclectic mix every night of the week, you'll forget all about me. Don't worry, I'll set a reminder on your phone. Would you like me to sync that to your laptop? The Rock Show, weeknights from 7 to 9 on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. It's definitely eclectic, and so am I as long as you program me that way. This is LIU Sports Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. 11.30 left to play until halftime. 27-15, the LIU Sharks lead the River Hawks of UMass Lowell. Matt Weinstein, Mikey Domagala here with you. The home opener for Long Island University, the Sharks. Jay Sean Augusto will run it. Flowers lobs up for Clark, but he's going to get called for the push-off. That's Clark's second foul, Mikey. They gotta watch him. It looks like they're subbing him out. Who's coming in here, man? Now it looks like that is gonna be Usman Dean, the big man all the way from Dakar, Senegal. If they can't stop Ty Flowers in the paint, what is what is Nadim gonna do? Seven footer, two thirty five. Let's see how long we'll handle him. Hey, you know, Flowers really, you know, a stretch four, but Nadim a true center as the transition offense for UMass Lowell converts on the lay-in from Connor Withers, 27-17. Usman Dean got the start the other day at the five. Ashton Bradley's three-point attempt is no good, just short. And now with a little bit of room to run, it's Mitchell for UMass Lowell. Mitchell kicks it out to Obadiah Noel, who's been all but silenced by LIU. And Jermaine Jackson gets called with a blocking foul. The three point line. Two more substitutions, Mikey, for the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. Going number two, Khalil Thomas coming in. Also number 15, Alan Blunt. Let's see if there'll be some game changers. So Josh Gantz and Ron Mitchell will take a seat. Also Julian Batts back in for LIU. He'll take Jay Sean Augusto's spot. First time all season, Augusto has seen a break. He played all 40 minutes in game one against URI earlier this week. Owens Noel kicks it out to Wither. Spot up three from straight away. No good. Rebound is tipped right back to him. He gets it over to Lutet in the corner. He's met by Ashton Bradley. A fresh shot clock. And that shot is blocked on the lay-in attempt. Flowers deflects. Flowers that was all over Christian Lutete, number 23 for Lowell. Heading down the middle. Ty Flowers, he's hot. He's doing everything. Block out of bounds. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Off the inbound. Obadiah Noel gets it back. After a few passes, Lowell looking for something. Obadiah Noel has it back at the top of the key. He has eight points. Shot clock has to hoist his three-pointer short. 
Noel now falls three of five from the field, two of four from deep. Just three of nine as a team for low from three-point range. 27-17, LIU leads. Jermaine Jackson kicks over to Flowers. Now Bats has it. A little bit of a weave. He checked for Jackson. A little bit of some Steph Curry range From right there. very deep. But he clanks it off the side of the rim. No good. Noel with the rebound. He'll take it all the way himself. Kicks it out to the newly entered Allen Blunt. But it's blocked out of bounds by Dean. It'll remain lower ball. Looks like that was Flowers, Matt. If it was him, I'm not how, I'm not sure how they're going to rule it. That would be his second block on the night. Second block of the last 30 seconds. Still, nope. both of them look. Both of them made a difference on that shot. I'm not 100 percent sure who got a piece. Whether it was six nine Flowers or seven foot Dean. Regardless, I don't want to be anywhere underneath those trees. Oh, they're the twin towers down there. So Withers at the top of the key, kicks it out to Lutet. His three-pointer finds the bottom. It's back to a seven-point lead for LIU, nine and a half until halftime. Let's see what this LIU bench could do, man. Eight points for Lutet. The starters did terrific. Let's see if they can uh, keep up the tempo. A few more substitutions coming on the next dead ball for LIU, but until then, it's Julian Bats over to Flowers at the top of the key. Three-second call in the paint. Called on Uzman Deem. Actually, they're going to call it an offensive foul off the ball. Coming in, Matt, Vershawn Cotton making his first appearance of the game. Also, Jack Ballantyne. Big boy in the middle. He's taking... I don't know how they're going to do it. They'll take advantage of him in the paint, but let's see if he can weigh it down. So Ballantyne checks in for Dean after he commits that foul. Vershawn Cotton checks back into the game since he did start this game, came out a few minutes in. He's back in for the first time since then. Nine minutes left. Noel! His baseline jumper, no good, but a foul call. He got bailed out. It'll go against Julian Bats. Looks like Bats was complaining for a kick, like he kicked his foot out, and that was the reason for the foul. Ref still rewards him two free throws from the line. One of those landing space calls, Mike. Oh, yeah, a lot of James Harden. So at the line, Obadiah and Owell. Eight points tonight. First free throw is good. This is a very strong crowd for a home opener. Noel was three for six from the line in game one against UMass, against those minute men. His second one's no good. Rebound is tipped. Jack Valentine finally wins the loose ball, making his first appearance for LIU this season. Another transfer from Detroit Mercy. Jermaine Jackson gets all the way in. A little bit of a wild finish. He couldn't convert. Flowers with the long rebound gets inside. Scoop layup. No good. He shed some contact. No whistle. Six point lead for LIU. Noel slicing up the defense. He finds himself in no man's land. Has to kick it out. Now with Lutet in the corner. Still a plenty of time on the shot clock. 19 seconds as Rashawn Cotton gets called for a foul on the floor. Looks like Lowe is a little more three-point happy than LIU. LIU is trying to take advantage of the middle. They're just one of five from three, while Lowe is four of 11. Who else is coming in? Number three. After the next dead ball, we'll be coming in, Deshaun Augusto. And now, now they'll bring him in. Here what he is. Number three, Deshaun Augusto from Seattle, Washington. He's a senior. He was starting, wasn't he, Matt? That's right. He came yep. back into this game. He took a quick break for Sean Cotton back out of this game. Augusto played all 40 minutes in game one against URI this past Tuesday. He played about the first 10 minutes, only sat for two. Augusto is a guy you're going to see a lot of this season for LIU. Oh, yeah. He's a facilitator, and, you know, you saw that last game. Seven points, ten assists. Yes, he played a lot of minutes, but ten assists in a collegiate game is very strong. And now... You have your guys like Ty Flowers. You have your guys like Ray Juan Clark. That's all well and good. You have your stars. You have your scorers. But they have to be set up more times than not. And Jay Sean Augusto, the perfect guy to do it. And now, after a little bit of confusion, it looks like Lowell in the one and one. So Lutet does convert on the first. He'll be awarded one more. Christian Lutet, thus far on the night, has nine points. And last game he put up 17, so he's already pacing to almost triple that. Let's see what he could do. Ten points in his first 11 and a half minutes. He's played all game thus far for Lowell. He and Obadiah Noel, the only two to do so. LIU up by four now. At most, they led by 12 earlier on. Augusto off the feed from Bats, a long ways away from the rim. Screen on the left side from Flowers. 
He kicks it out. Bats will spot up from the right wing. Three pointers no good. Valentine tips the rebound to Flowers, but he's going to get called for the foul. So yet again, UMass Lowell will shoot the one and one in the bonus. It looks like Valentine was being very aggressive in there to tip to a wide open three from Augusto, but it didn't work out. Here they are back in the one and one. And now this might may be where LIU gets bit. Like I said, they were up. By at, by at most 12, they've been scoreless for the past three and a half minutes. Funny enough, that's how long Ray Juan Clark has been on the bench with those two fouls. So now, this with the one and one, first shot misses. I was about to say, he has a shot to cut it back to a one point, a one possession lead. That was Alan Blunt who missed the first, but the rebound is won. Obadiah Noel gets back into the lane and delivers on the runner. Two point game, LIU leads. Looking like LIU scrambling a little bit. Just a two point game. Let's see what they can do. They gotta start getting the ball in the move. Augusto at the top of the key. He's met by Khalil Thomas. Jermaine Jackson step back. He converted on the triple, but he dragged his foot. He's gonna get caught for the travel. LIU started the first five minutes with just one turnover. The last seven minutes, four. That's the reason for it. Some, you know, they're not making the best decisions with their fouls. They've all shot plenty of one and one free throws, but they've converted twice. That's why we're looking at just a two-point game. Uh, UMass Lowell on a ten-point run over the last four minutes as we step into yet another media timeout here. We're going to keep it right here for you. Mikey, Rayquan Clark started this game. He played the first nine minutes before converting the second foul, and head coach Derek Kellogg wanted to be safe, brought him out. I wouldn't be surprised if he sits about another five, six minutes, maybe plays the end of the half, but you don't want to go into halftime with three fouls. You're only been five in college basketball. But Clark, 15 points on seven of seven from the field. He did convert on a three-point attempt, but Ty Flowers really the guy making it all happen with the wingspan, the transition D turned into transition up. It's looking like Flowers and Clark are the Batman Robin to all of this team. They're both playing well together, running in transition together, assisting to each other. But because of Flowers' foul trouble, like you said, Matt, is Coach going to really, you know, gamble That's with him Clark. Oh, Raekwon Clark, excuse me. And now, is, is Kellogg really going to gamble with him being out there? And now Mikey, on the side of the UMass Lowell Riverhawks, the guy we talked about at the top of the broadcast was the shooting guard, Obadiah Noel. He said he's really going to be the guy. You know, that brings Lowell where they need to go. But Noel, he started slow, but he sure picked it up. He has 11 points on four of six. He's three boards as well in 13 minutes. Another strong performance. Last game against Massachusetts, 18 points, four rebounds, 50% shooting from the floor. Here we see Augusto with a hard press at midcourt. On who else but Obadiah Noel. He steps back. And Lutet, quick delivery. And just like that, first lead of the game for UMass Lowell, it's 28-27. They started slow, but they're staying consistent, and they're picking it up. Hitting some threes, LIU. And another turnover, I hate to cut you off, Mikey, as Augusto right over to bats, but he just couldn't hang on. And actually, they're going to call an off-ball foul it's on Ashton Bradley. Matt, I'll say it again, LIU just one three-pointer so far, while Lowell has five. That's a difference maker in this game. That's why they just took the advantage. It is uh, it is evident that LIU is missing Raekwon Clark here as they now trail by one. They were up by 12 a little while ago. Over to Diana Well. Over to Khalil Thomas. And he's going to get called for the travel. Good zone defense. Everybody sliding their way. He forced him into that, into that travel. If he didn't slide over, that travel wasn't going to be called. Seven minutes left until halftime. LIU down by one. Augusto coming up the floor. Tonight, two points, three assists. Flowers on the left wing. Hands it off to Bats, who gets it back to Augusto at the top of the case. Straight on the left side from Valentine. Augusto keeps it. And now dishes it over to Flowers. Shot clock at 12. Entry to Valentine. Kicks it out. Bradley, the left-handed stroke from three. Rattles out. No good. Flowers on the tip-in. First try didn't go. The second one connects. LIU retakes the one-point lead. He now has a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. You know, still six minutes left. He's going to have a very, very strong stat line tonight. Flowers has played all 14 minutes of this game thus far. Obadiah Noel with a runner. Flowers in his face. No good, and he has the rebound to himself. That's his 11th. Low outlet pass. Augusto has it behind his back. But Valentine could 
not keep it. Obadiah Noel gets all the way inside, backing down Flowers, and he lays it in to retake the UMass lower lead. 13 points for Noel. Bats corner three. Long. Long rebound for Augusto. Over to Flowers. He'll try for the corner. And that one's in and out. Valentine, another offensive rebound for LIU. Gets it out to Flowers. He'll try again. Same spot, same result. He cannot get Both hurt. of those shots just rolled out. Flowers and the one would have been up to 16 points on the night. The one, the shot attempt from Bats as well. Three. Three pointers, all missed, two offensive rebounds, but LIU could not convert. They still trail by one, five and a half to play till halftime. Kick ball out of bounds, off tie flowers, it'll remain low of ball. LIU now just one of ten from three point range, man. Here comes the sub for Lowell, number 12, Josh Gantz. Graduate student, 6'7", big in the paint. Number five, Connor Withers, taking a step to the bench. Noel off the inbound. Quickly finds Withers, but his post up no good. The rebound by Blunt, he lays it up no good, but Noel cleans it up. 15 points. Ties Rayquan Clark for the game high. In transition, Valentine's lay-in blocked. Now we see Lowell with the defense. Early on it was Post trapping and trapping, committing turnovers. Now they're getting a lot of blocks. And now Flowers contesting the three-point attempt from Obadiah Noel. LIU. Bringing it up the floor. Ballantyne, the big man. Ballantyne all the way up the floor. His shot can't convert. And on the sideline, it will be called out of bounds. UMass Lowell will have possession. And Mikey, Raekwon Clark now back in this game. He takes the spot of Ballantyne. Clark sat about seven minutes. But he was hot when he left. Seven of seven. And they need him. LIU down three. Let's see what kind of immediate impact he could have. Popping those mid-range jumpers like he did the first few minutes. Blunt. Over. Into the corner for Thomas. His shot is blocked by Flowers. His third of the game from Flowers. And now Augusta has it off the pass from Bats. But a foul called. I, be I believe it will be on the floor. The foul is going to be called against number zero, Ron Mitchell. If you want to talk about Ty Flowers, he's doing it all like we were saying earlier. Right now. 12 points, 10 rebounds, 3 blocks. He hasn't sat yet. No, he hasn't. I don't know how fatigued he is, but he's still producing. He's the only guy who's played all 16 minutes. And Christian Lutet on the other side of the ball for UMass. Lowell has played all 16 as well. The only two. Screen and roll. Flowers gets doubled. He has to kick it back out. And it's off the hand of Khalil that Thomas. almost hit me in the head there, Matt. That ball was coming at us. Luckily for you, it got tipped. Otherwise, you were taking a fastball to the chin. <laughs> so it got tipped off Ashton Bradley. So it will be lower ball. They lead yeah. by three. We got Gantz with the inbounds. So Josh Gantz. Entry pass deflected. Somehow it stays in bounds. And in the corner, it's Khalil Thomas. Another foul called against LIU. Another one against Ashton Bradley. That's his second. The tenth for LIU. And that means they're back at the line. I mean, that one seemed like he didn't mean to do that. Ashton Bradley seemed to trip him. Listen, there's nothing you can do about that. He's back to the line. And, ex shoot. and excuse me, kind of foul. Not only is he back to the line, but that's the tenth team foul, Mikey. It's the double bonus. Oh, He's wow. taken two. First one off the right side of the rim, no good. Another substitution here for LIU. Ashton Bradley will see the team bench after that second foul. Brandon breaks. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Jackson, Jackson coming here. Will come back in. He played a few minutes earlier on. Six to be exact. Second free throw attempt. That one's off back on here. Takes a high bounce, no good. Thomas Ofer at the line on that trip. LIU still within a possession. It's a three-point game. Let's see what Augusto can cook up here for the Stars. Augusto over to Jackson. Jackson, he is a shooter, and he gets it over to G Julian Batts. He gets doubled at the top of the key, finds the open man. Who else can make one? Clark. As he connects, he has 17, still perfect from the field, 8 of 8. He slipped right in there, turned around, little baby hook right inside, two points. Perfectly executed, screen and roll on the other side. It's Mitchell, his elbow jumper no good. Bats with the rebound, transition three, finds the bottom of the net. LIU retakes the lead, 34 to 32. 3.15 left till head. 
Mitchell all the way back up the floor. Scoop laying over the long reach of Flowers. That'll tie the game at 34. It's about to be Flowers' fourth block, but he just slivered around it for two. Jermaine Jackson. High ball game. At the top of the key. He's met by Lutet, the Iron Man, thus far for Lowell. And now Bats at the top of the key has it. Straight to the left side from Clark again. He bleeds to the basket, but this time they read it. Jackson tries to find Clark, but it's batted away by Gant. It's a turnover for LIU. Mitchell has it. Spinning inside. Blocked by Ty Flowers, his fourth. And Mitchell can't keep it in bounds. Ty Flowers gets it up. Yeah, Mikey, it looks like we're going to have the final media timeout of this half. 34 to 34. Two and a half minutes remaining until halftime. We're going to step aside for a quick break here. It's LIU basketball right here on LIU Sports Radio. I want the greatest hits from the early years of rock. I want the forgotten favorites from the 50s and early 60s. We, we want, want two, 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 two shows, shows in one. one. Two shows in one? Hi, this is Alan Seltzer. Join me Saturday nights at 7 on the Groove Yard to hear the greatest hits and the forgotten favorites from the early years of rock. That's the Groove Yard where oldies come alive on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Hi, this is Woody Collins, host of Trawling the Decades. Every week I pick a theme and explore it in songs that run the gamut from new wave to heavy metal, from southern rock to punk, from grunge to Britpop, from blues to soul and funk. Any song that first saw the light of day in the past six decades is fair game on Trawling the Decades, Tuesday nights from 9 to 11 on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Hello, everybody. This is Terry Bradshaw, and you're listening to LIU Sports Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to LIU Sports Radio. Sharks and Riverhawks, LIU and UMass Lowell, men's basketball here. Home opener on this Friday night in downtown Brooklyn for Long Island University. The preseason number one pick in the Northeast Conference. They have plenty of non-conference games to play until they get to January 9th, that conference opener against Central Connecticut. Tie game here, Jay Sean, uh, Julian Batts, rather. Scoop laying, gets a nice bounce, puts it over to set. LIU retakes the lead, 36-34. to 34. Bats now with five points. He was moving in slow motion there, he flipped it up. Right in, got the roll on the rim. Gantz over to the newly entered Luca Maziosvili. And Lutet has it in the corner. His three-pointer is long, no good. Long rebound, but he can't handle it before it goes out of bounds. Here comes number five, Connor Withers for UMass Low for number 15, Alan Blunt. So, as I just mentioned, outside of that timeout, Luca Maziashvili, the freshman guard from Georgia, gets his first action here tonight. And a little fun fact from Luca: he was a member of the under-20 Georgian national team. So he's had lots of basketball experience, even one on a national team. A lot of success for him as he now takes the floor for the Riverhawks. Jay Sean Augusto has it. Kicks it out to Clark. He mishandles it. But now he has it yet again. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. His shot attempt is blocked. First official miss for Clark. He's still eight of nine. As Obadiah Noel brings it back up the floor. Two-point game. Three-point attempt from Josh Gantz. No good. Flowers tips the rebound to Jermaine Jackson. Cross-court pass. Augusto, intended for Clark, it's tipped to Bats, his three-pointer's no good. Flowers can't handle the rebound, instead he hits the deck, over by and No foul it. over there. And Lowell has numbers now. He gets inside, dishes it off to Lieutenant, nice beat. From Noel, it's tied yet again at 36. That was all because Flower was pushed on the opposite end. He took a little bit to get back on defense. They exposed the paint. Boom, two points because he wasn't around. They took advantage of the numbers. 55 seconds till halftime. And a foul called on the floor. And that'll go against Luka Maziashvili. Looks like it maybe could have been a jump ball. They got a little tied up. More contact on the arm than on the ball. And now they're in the one and one. Seven fouls. So Julian Bass will go to the line to shoot two. The senior guard from Pittsburgh, PA. LIU a perfect two for two from the line. Why low struggling a little bit. Just three of seven. 42.9%. Let's see if LIU can take the free throw advantage because Lowell has it. Bats shoots the one and one. He converts on the first one. 
First free throw attempt of the season for Julian Batts. He didn't get to the line last Tuesday against Rhode Island. He's perfect from the line, two of two. Last season, an 85% free throw shooter. He'll show you why. 38-36, LIU leads, 48 seconds left until half. The cutter in the lane connects. It's Christian Lutet off the feed from Connor Withers. And Lutet will go to the line for one more. That foul call. I believe that's going to be against Ty Flowers, Mike. It is. I got to tell you, Matt, that was perfect execution from Lowe there. A trap at the top of the key. Swung the ball left. A cutter deep inside and one from number 23, Christian Lutete. So Lutet converts. Lutet. He now has a game-high 18 points. Jack Ballantyne came back on the floor. He took the spot of Raekwon Clark. Now Ballantyne finds Flowers. Step back, jumper off the pump fake. No good from three. Flowers now falls to 0 from 4 from three. Maziashvili, his three-point attempt. I believe it was blocked by Flowers. That'll be his tip in the game. You got a fingertip on that one, Matt. Looked like an air ball, but you saw the tip right on the ball. Lowell now will look to hold. Three-second shot clock differential. 13 on the game clock. Obadiah Noel sizing up Jermaine Jackson. He looks to go behind his back. He almost cuts it up. Three on the shot clock. Noel wins it as Jermaine Jackson hits the deck. Two seconds left on the clock. It, will, it goes out of bounds. As LIU tries to rush it, it will go back to UMass Lowell. Now inbound at half court with 1.3 seconds till halftime. Lowell does have a three-point lead. See what the refs are trying to shape up here. A final timeout of the half. Called by Pat Duquette and UMass Lowell. The Riverhawks looking to draw one more play. They could potentially go into the halftime locker room with a two possession lead. They currently lead by three points. First eight, nine minutes of this game, Mikey, they trailed by 12 before getting themselves back into this game with a 10-0 run, and it's all been behind the motor. Christian Lutet has played all 20 minutes of this game. He and Ty Flowers, the only two on each side of the ball to say so. Lutet, 18 on 6 of 10 shooting, three boards and assist, and a lot of hustle that you're not going to see in the scoreboard. Yep, and on that last possession, right before they got into this position, Lutet took the ball right over. Right over five foot ten, Jermaine Jackson for the N one. Hit the free throw ball coming the other way. Let's see what we got here, Matt. Just one point three on the game clock. One point three, they'll inbound it. And <laughs> Maziashvili couldn't really the, corral that one from the ref on the inbound. Matt. I thought they may have called that he dropped the ball, but the official says it was on the transfer. So Maziashvili does have a shot here. Inbounds in the corner. The shot for Withers blocked. By Ty Flowers, that number is six, I believe, Matt. six of the first ten. LIU is trailing, however. They will go into the halftime locker room down 41 to 38. Mikey, LIU ends one of their last four. They're struggling from deep. They're just two of 13. They've only made one of their last ten. Listen, Matt, they came out of the gates firing. You heard us. You heard me. They're running in transition, getting stops, putting defense to offense. That all stopped when Rick Paul Clark kind of came out of the game due to his foul trouble. Yes, Ty Flowers has been all over the board. Six block shots. He's got set, uh, what is 17 points, but... The other part of LIU is not doing too well. That's right, it's Raekwon Clark who has 17. Flowers the double-double, 12-11, and he's, he's registered for five, so that extra one that we weren't sure okay. about, it did go to Usman Deem. But Flowers, potential triple-double watch at halftime with blocks. Five, 12, he already has the double-double, 12-11, double, but five blocks, two steals as well. On the other end, Obadiah in the well. And Christian Lutet leading the way with 17 and 18 points respectively. We're going to step aside here. UMass Lowell leads LIU at halftime, 41 to 38. We're going to turn it back to the studio all the way in Brookville, New York for LIU Sharks at the half with Jason Glickman. You're listening to LIU Sports Radio, the home of the LIU Sharks. 
Welcome to LIU Sharks at the Half, where it's a lot quieter here than it is at the Steinberg Wellness Center. I'm the host, Jason Glickman, and tonight the LIU Sharks are trailing the UMass Lowell Riverhawks by a score of 41-38. to Now let's take a look at the NEC scoreboard. Some other games going on tonight. Sacred Heart taking on UConn. They are trailing that one. It's 25-21. UConn has that four-point lead with 7.37 to go in the first half. In other games, St. Francis, Pennsylvania is taking on Richmond in Virginia. They lead that one 42-35 to with a minute and a half to go in the first half. St. Francis with the seven-point edge as they near halftime. A couple games will take place in just a couple minutes at 8 o'clock p.m. Fairleigh Dickinson is visiting DePaul. That game goes underway in just 11 and a half minutes, and Merrimack visits Northwestern. That game also will commence at 8 o'clock. Now, Jeff Kroll sat down with the NEC Commissioner, Noreen Morris. We're joined by the Commissioner of the Northeast Conference, Noreen Morris. Thank you, Commissioner, for a few minutes here today on WCWP. I'm thrilled to be with you today. Thank you. I just wanted to go over the history of the NEC. We have a lot of listeners here to WCWP here at the LIU Post Campus, and uh, this is new to a lot of them. Uh, the Brooklyn folks know all about the NEC, but the Long Island folks don't. Uh, tell us a little about the history of the conference. Sure, I'd love to. Um, the conference has been around for uh, over 40 years. Actually, we're coming up on 40 years. And um, we currently sponsor 23 sports. We have now 11 members with the addition of Merrimack College. We host 19 championships each year and provide our institutions with service all around areas such as marketing, compliance, um, media services, promotions. We run our own digital network, NEC Front Row, which you can watch all of the LIU events that LIU chooses to stream. We are uh, nine full-time staff with three interns and managing all of that. That sounds pretty busy. Uh, the conference actually started, according to my notes, as the ECAC Metro Conference back in the early 80s, and then it became the Northeast Conference in 1988. And the interesting thing is LIU is actually a charter member, which is something that I don't think a lot of our Long Island listeners know about. Yeah, it's a, it's a fabulous uh, tribute to Long Island University, seeing uh, the beauty of being a part uh, participant with the Northeast Conference, and they've been a very uh, successful member at that. So one of the reasons it's a little different here on Long Island is that football is a new sport for LIU to be part of the NEC, and that's what folks are trying to get used to out here as the season winds down, and uh, it's an upgrade to Division I play. But as we move into the basketball season, which is about to start, that's old hat for LIU and the NEC. I mean, as a charter member, uh, LIU has been a big part of the NEC for all these years. Absolutely. Yeah, LIU um, basketball, for sure, has been a very successful program, and they uh, won championship a number of years ago uh, under Derek Kellogg and had a run uh, as well a few years prior to that. Um, so they have had a very strong basketball program, and... Um, and on many other sports as well. Uh, softball has uh, been very competitive and won a number of championships, indoor track and field as well. Those are two that jump out at me as, as programs that have uh, consistently been very competitive. So as we try to educate our, our Long Island listeners, uh, the students, alumni, and the fans of the uh, newly named Sharks, uh, football is new, but uh, basketball being established, and when we move ahead to the spring, t uh, sports like baseball, that's been a long time NEC uh, component there with, with LIU. The difference there is that will be played here on Long Island. Basketball will still be played in Brooklyn. There'll be no change, really, to the basketball program. Yeah, except for the name the Sharks. So, yeah, it's, it's been a, a really fun transition, I think, with the, with the new mascot, um, the Sharks, and the new logo, and the ability for us to add uh, not only football is new to the Division One ranks for um, LIU, but men's lacrosse 
is also something that the Northeast Conference sponsors. They'll be playing lacrosse with us as well. So we're really excited about the addition of those two programs. So I would say the most complicated thing for you is uh, when you want to come see a sport with LIU involved, you just have to figure out which campus you're going to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for, you know, the rule for the most part is that most of the indoor sports are uh, in Brooklyn and most of the outdoor sports are post, uh, with the exception of softball, which will eventually, I believe, move back to Brooklyn once they have uh, finished building the field there. And I think that bowling might be the only indoor sport that's in Brooklyn. Yes, but otherwise, uh, swimming and uh, volleyball, all that was uh, moved to Brooklyn, so uh, we no longer have that here at the LIU Post Campus. But uh, football is winding down. Basketball will start in Brooklyn, and then a, a lot of sports, as you say, back here in the in the spring. Uh, we first met at one of the football home games, and uh, was that your first time at the LIU Post Campus? First time for an event. I, I did a visit, I don't know, last spring or so, uh, and then in January of this past year, we brought our staff to do an orientation for all the LIU Post coaches and administrators just for them to get to know us and what the Northeast Conference is all about um, and you know, talk through some policies, procedures, and then you know the newer coaches to the NEC, we sat down one-on-one -on -one with them just to work through the logistics. But uh, yeah, that was my first time being on campus for events, and I was really impressed. Um, really liked the, the newly renovated stadium. Uh, I thought the tailgating and the, the crowd was really into it. There seemed to be a lot of school spirit. And just one other note, uh, something to keep in mind as the sports seasons change, there are different schools involved in different sports. Not every school participates in every sport. Uh, in basketball, there'll be some different schools involved than there were during the football season, for instance. Right. So uh, basketball, all uh, 11 of our institutions play both men's and women's basketball. Football, we currently have um, now eight NEC schools that sponsor football and one associate member in Duquesne. Duquesne is in the A-10, but A-10 doesn't sponsor football, so they play with us. Um, so there are a number of sports where Maybe one or two of our institutions don't sponsor that sport, so there, we don't have the full contingent of 11 members um, sponsoring every sport. I think basketball is the only one on the men's side that we have all 11 schools participating. On the women's side, we have a few more sports that have all 11 schools participating, so that's I'm looking at our, our, our chart, actually. It's uh, basketball, cross-country, Indoor track and field, outdoor track and field, and soccer are the programs where we actually have all 11 institutions competing. The rest have somewhere less than at least six and, and less than 10. Well, we can't thank you enough for a few minutes, Commissioner Noreen Morris of the Northeast Conference, joining us today here on WCWP. And if it's all right with you, we'd like to check in with you from time to time, perhaps later in the winter season, again in the spring, just for an update as to what's happening in the Northeast Conference. All right? Sure, I'd love that. I'd be honored. Thank you very much for having me on today. Very good. Thanks for joining us. The Northeast Conference Commissioner joining us here. I'm Jeff Kroll. Now back to LIU Sharks at the half. Next up, here on LIU Sharks at the Half, here's James Waldoff with this week's Sharks Report. Today, the LIU Sharks field hockey team saw their season come to an end in the NEC Championship semifinals as they fell to the Ryder University Bronx 3-0. The second-seeded Ryder scored 37 seconds into the matchup and never looked back. In the losing effort, goalie Rachel Vellis made seven saves. The Sharks finished their inaugural Division I season with a 7-10 overall record and a 4-2 NEC record. Last night, the LIU women's basketball team fell to the University of Rhode Island 79-56. Brandi Thomas led the team with 14 points and sophomore Shyla Sanford followed close behind with 13 points. Earlier in the week on Tuesday, the Sharks battled hard against St. Peter's University, but ultimately fell in an 89-74 defeat. Next up for the Sharks is Fairfield University at home on Wednesday, November 13th. Women's soccer sophomore forward Kendra Oldroyd was named to the All-NEC second team. Oldroyd finished her season as the team's leading scorer with five goals. She also added one assist, which allowed her to finish with 11 points on the year. Oldroyd had 15 shots on goal and ended her season with a 47 shot on goal percentage. The women's soccer team finished their season with an overall record of 5-12-1, and, 
and an overall NEC record of 4-6. and six. This past Saturday, the football team lost in their final NEC matchup of the season to Robert Morris University 28-17. Freshman quarterback Jacob Cheshire made his collegiate debut in the loss. The freshman threw for 81 yards and completed 10 out of 19 passes. Cheshire also rushed 9 times for 31 yards and a touchdown. This week, the Sharks football team has a bye and their focus is on their next opponent, Villanova University, who they'll play under the lights next Friday, November 15th at 7 p.m. On Saturday, November 2nd, the men's cross-country team competed in the NEC Championship meet. The Sharks finished 8th in the NEC out of 11 teams. Junior Michael Herbert was the top finisher for the Sharks, coming in at 26 overall with a time of 26 minutes and 54 seconds. The women's cross-country team also competed in the NEC Championship meet this past Saturday, November 2nd. The Sharks finished in 11th place out of 11 teams. Early on in the race, sophomore Margaret McKeever lost a shoe and had to be pulled from the meet. Freshman Anhoa Bria was the Sharks' top competitor, finishing 40th overall with a time of 19 minutes and 44 seconds. I'm James Waldoff, and this has been the Shark Report. So that'll do it for us here. We're going to step aside for a minute, but when we come back, we're going to send it back to the Steinberg Wellness Center, where it is currently 41-38, to Riverhawks leading the LIU Sharks. Matt Weinstein and Mikey Damagala have the call of the second half. This has been LIU Sharks at the half on LIU Sports Radio. All right, my children, Grandfather Rock is here. Hi, this is Chris McIntosh. Join me every Friday night at 9 and Sunday night at 8 for Rock and Soul Gospel. Guaranteed it's going to be the best rock and roll on the radio. So that's every Friday at 9 and Sunday at 8 for Rock and Soul Gospel on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Alice Cooper comes to the Tilla Center on Friday, November 22nd. Enter for your chance to win a pair of tickets by visiting WCWP.org now through November 15th. That's Alice Cooper, live at the Tillis Center, Friday, November 22nd at 8 p.m. Enter to win a pair of tickets now through November 15th at WCWP.org. This is 88.1 FM, WCWP Brookville, the home of the LIU Sharks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Steinberg Wellness Center here on the LIU. Brooklyn campus, just a few blocks away from Barclay Center, Matt Weinstein here, Mikey Domagala with you, second half, just a few moments from being underway, 41-38, to 38, the UMass Lowell Riverhawks lead the LIU Sharks, but Mikey, the majority of that first half, LIU was in front, oh yeah, so LIU held a 64% lead, during the game at the whole 100% time. So UMass has only held the lead 21% of the time, and they're still up three. They had a big comeback about mid-half, and uh, LIU just, you know, the defense was working early on. They kind of bowed down a little bit, let them get back into it. So, some reasons for that is a three-point game. Lowell's hit five threes, while LIU's only hit two. If you hit two threes and a half, that's not going to look too good for the scoreboard. Two of 13 are the LIU Sharks from from downtown. Not much, you know, Lowell isn't much better. They're 5 of 16. Mm-hmm. But considering the volume that both teams are taking, obviously, five greater than two. I don't need to tell you yep, that. Yep. I'm no mathematician, but you're hitting your shots. That's where, if you're, you know, it's going to fall. You miss Lowell for shooting 41% from the field as a whole. But LIU, when you add in the points in the paint, everything inside of the arc, they are leading the field goal, the field goal game. Percentage-wise, they're shooting just under 47%. Two big points about this hand. I mean, Lowell only had six bench points. It's not a tremendous amount of points, but LIU had zero. Zero bench points. You're not going to win many games when you bench only score zero points. Of the 38 points for LIU, Ty Flowers and Raekwon Park have 29 of them. Seven of them from Julian Battle, two of them from Jay Sean Augusto, all four of them starters. And again, nothing from the LIU bench on the board. Both teams back on the floor for LIU. Their starting lineup intact of Augusto, Batch, Cotton, Clark, and Flowers. 
And for UMass Lowell, it looks to be the same. Owens, Henderson, Noel, Gantz, and Lutet. Flowers and Lutet have played this entire game. The Sharks now shooting from left to right on your radio dial. As a foul was called on the floor to start this half against UMass Lowell, Augusto will inbound underneath. Lowell ended the half on a 5 0 run. They lead by three. Raquan Clark only has two fouls now. I know they kind of tried nursing him through the first half. Let's see if he'll come out firing in this half. Augusto draws the foul on the floor. That'll go against Jordan Owens. Quickly, two fouls. Connor Withers and Jordan Owens, they both drew their second. Two fouls in just 20, in just 20 seconds, Mikey. It's not going to be too good if they get in the bonus pretty quick. That's low. Augusto kicks it out to Flowers. Now it's Augusto. Screen on the right side. Pick and pop. Flowers has it. He's met by Gantz. One dribble. Pulls up from deep and finds the ball. Ty Flowers connects on his first three-pointer of the game. He's now one of five, and that ties the game at 41 each. First possession for Lowell here in the second half. Jordan Owens, hesitation, blocked out of bounds by Ty Flowers, number six for the six foot nine big man. Owens is only 0-3 in this game, and last game against Massachusetts, Owens was only two for 10 from the field for seven points. Looks like LIU's oh. Another block. another block by Ty Flowers off the backboard, but Withers is able to clean it up and he lays it in again, Mike, I hate to cut you off, but Flowers just so electric on the defensive oh, yeah. end, but Lowell able to take advantage, they got the ball back, they lead by two, 43-41, Clark spinning inside, the foul is called, I believe they're going to say it was on the way up. 21 minutes into this game, Ty Flowers already has seven blocks. If he could finish with the triple-double, that would be incredible. And actually, they're going to rule the foul. Ball on the floor. The foul goes against Obadiah Noel. That's Noel's first, but the third quick foul to half for the Lowell Riverhawks. Augusto inbound to Flowers in the paint. Post hook off the side of the backboard. No good. And now bringing it up the floor is Jordan Owens. Owens. To Lutet, Augusto, screen the left side from Gantz, but an offensive foul, illegal screen as he lowered his shoulder. Josh Gantz gets called, fourth team foul for UMass Lowell in a minute, a minute 20. 20. 18-40 left to play in regulation. One more team foul. LIU's going to line for the one and one. LIU's just down two points right now. Maybe they're not hitting other field goals, but if you want to win the game on free throws, you most certainly can. Excuse me, three more fouls. The seven will get LIU to the one and one. Vershawn Cotton off the handoff from Flowers. His three pointer is no good, but Flowers with the offensive rebound gets it over to Clark. Rebound and an assist for Flowers. Clark lays it in. He now has 19 on 9 of 10 shooting. LIU back with the press man led by Flowers. Christian Lutet salvages a broken play and lays it in. Lowell leads again by 2, 45-43. Raekwon Clark tried to stop on a dime after receiving that pass, but he gets called for a travel. LIU's press looked really good, led by Clark and Flowers. They tipped the ball, but Lowell got lucky and laid it right in and went, went to the right spot at the right time. Lowell breaks the press. Noel with the open corner three, but it's no good. Bats fights for the loose ball. He wins it and gets the Flowers across half court. Transition three in and out. Another good look for Flowers from deep, but again he has trouble connecting. He's now one for six. From deep, that is. That wasn't the best of shots for Flowers. He could get something better inside. A little bit of, you know, two guys in front of him, pull up three. It's not the best shot. I'm sure Coach Kellogg isn't too happy about that Especially, one. Especially, you know, five seconds maybe into the shot clock as Obadiah Noel spinning inside. Shots contested by Flowers. I don't think he got a hand on it. Shot clock didn't reset as Lutet with the rebound for Lowell. His shot's no good. Augusto now up, uh, up the floor. LIU does not have numbers. Cotton tries again for three and connects for Sean Cotton with his first three points of the game. LIU's first lead of the second half. It's 46 to 45. Three minutes since halftime. Gantz hands it off. Owens over to Withers. Spot up jumper short. Lutet wins the rebound. His shot won't go, but a foul's called. He'll have to earn him at the line. 
for two. The foul called against Ty Flowers. Excuse me, it's going to be Ray Clark. Ray Clark. Clark. That's, That's number three from Clark. So Clark will have to be a bit careful. That's his third foul. Most of anybody. A couple guys have two fouls. Looks like Clark is turning and facing the bench. He's kind of yelling back and forth with his coaches. I bet you his coaches matter trying to tell him, watch your fouls, slide your feet, don't reach in. They need him right now. Now Lutet converts on his first free throw. It's back to a tie game. Jordan Owens takes a seat. Luka Maziashvili checks back in for Lowell. Lutet in and out, no good. It's still a tie game. 46 apiece. 16.45 to play in regulation. Cotton alone on the right wing. Cotton wants the ISO. Let's see what he can do. And finally, Clark gets himself free on the low block. He's stripped. Finally, there's a loose ball. He hits the deck in the corner with, oh, with Obadiah in the well. He rolls out of bounds off the fingertip of Raekwon Clark. He can't believe it. A technical foul, man. This crowd is so loud, we can't even understand what's going on. Looks like the ref called for a technical foul against Lowell. Let's see what's going on here. And I think they're going to discuss it, and it looks like they're going to rescind it. Nothing called. Nothing called against either team, but what they did do is they reversed the call. LIU has the ball. 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Augusto off the inbound. Augusto looking to get inside. Floats it up high off glass over Withers. LIU back up by two. It's like a heavyweight fight, Matt. Back and forth, counterpunch by counterpunch. Got a lot of ball left to play. 16 and counting. Eight footer from Lutet. High arc pin down left. Great shot contest by Julian Batts of LIU, but you know, he got the shot up. Switch. Christian, high ball game, 16 minutes left. Christian Lutet with a game high, 23 points. Augusto over to Raekwon Clark on the left wing. Lutet's played all 24 minutes here, Matt. Now Cotton to, to bats off the back door cut. No look feed. Somehow it gets through the lane to Flowers. And he lays it in off the wow. feed from Vershawn Cotton. Long outlet pass. Withers has it. He gets it to Lutet. He gets Clark off his feet. And that's the fourth foul called against Raekwon Clark, I'm sure. He's going to see the bench for a little bit now. But those free throws will come after this first media timeout of the second half. 15 and a half minutes left in regulation. LIU leads 50 to 48 over the River Hawks. We're going to step aside for a quick one right here on LIU Sports Radio. LIU men's basketball. We'll be right back. Into the Void, live on Wednesday nights from 9 to 11 p.m. with host David Leitner, playing deep tracks and your favorites. A contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Heavy metal, hard rock, punk, and alternative. Can we tell our parents? No! Music you won't hear anywhere else on the air. Rock and roll, by its very nature, leads to a breakdown in discipline. Into the Void, Wednesday nights at 9 on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Can you dig it? Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. This is LIU Sports Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to LIU Men's Basketball, the home opener here at the Steinberg Wellness Center. Matt Weinstein, Mikey Dolma Gala here with you. 15 and a half left to play. LIU up by two. But it's going to be a long 15 and a half, especially for Raekwon Clark. He sees the bench now for LIU with four fouls. LIU needs him at 19 points, 9 of 10 from the field. They need his production. So Lutet, who drew that fourth foul from, from Clark, gets to the line. He connects on his first. He's 5 of 6 from the free throw line. Make it 6 of 7 for 20. 
24 points. Make that 25, Matt. He now has 25 points. Has played all 25 minutes. Lutet is holding it down for Lowell. And as Clark came out, Jack Ballantyne came back in for LIU. For Sean Cotton, top of the key. Over to Julian Bax. Back to Cotton. Fakes his right, goes left, step back, keeps it. Cotton. Over to Julian Bats now, he'll slow it up. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Augusto has it, far away from the basket. Over to Ballantyne in the corner, spot up, desperation heave at the end of the shot clock, no good. Flowers can't tip it to anybody, Lutet wins it. That's his fifth board. Christian Lutet, 25 points, five boards on eight of 13 shooting. 25 minutes, he hasn't taken one single break. He's doing it all for Lowell. He and Ty Flowers, the Iron Man of their respective teams. Oh yeah. Over Diane Noel now. Sees a hole, looks to get inside, spinning. Nice bounce pass over to Maziashvili. But Flowers with another rebound after contesting that shot. That's his 13th. Ballantyne alone in the corner off the feed from Augusto. You want to talk about single-handed defense to offense. Ballantyne gets two stops on the defensive end. He's in the middle contesting everything. Transition bucket from three. He's doing it all. LIU. Breaks the tie at 50. It's 53-50 now. 14-10 left to play. Ballantyne guarding Lutet. He gets it over to Noel. Noel has Bats off the screen. Pull up jumper. Bats heavily contested. But he he gets the call. That's Noel. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Good shot contest from Bats, Matt. But he looked a little bit too aggressive. Hit him right on the arm or the elbow. Number 11, Noel, heading to the free throw line. Second foul of the game for Julian Bats, the third for LIU in the half. Albertine Noel with 17 points. It's the second trip to the line. He was one for two previously, and he converts on the first one. Substitution for Lowell, number 15, Alan Blunt, coming in for number five, Connor Withers. Blunt saw some action in the first half. He played nine minutes, three boards and an assist. Nothing on the board as he was 0 for 2 for the field. One of them was a triple. Noel, after hitting the first, converts on both. And it's a one-point game. 53-52, LIU leads it. We got a game here, Matt. The crowd is in it. I could only imagine if it's close with five minutes left how loud this building is going to be. 13.50 in regulation remaining. Cotton off the screen for the left side for Valentine. He rolls to the basket. Cotton looks like he got away with a bit of a push-off. And a bailout call, Mazi Osley gets called for the region foul. As for Sean Cotton, almost threw it away. I see number 11, Noel for Lowell. He's complaining to the ref he wanted to travel, but the travel was caused by the bump, so the bump will always rule over the travel. Augusto floats it up for Ty Flowers off the inbound. His shot's no good, but Augusto with the offensive rebound. Augusto dribbles himself out of the corner, back to Brashawn Cotton. At the top of the key, screen on the right side from Flowers. He was looking for the roll, but he was double. Ballantyne off the outlet. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Now five. Flowers in the corner, pulls the trigger, his shot's short, and it's rebounded by Josh Gantz of Lowell. Up the floor is Christian Lutet. The gather goes around the world and lays it in. Right around Ballantyne's heavy contest. He got that one in. He's got 27 points, 9 of 14 from the field. Talk about efficient play. Lowell retakes the lead by one. It's 54-53. Another foul called on the floor against UMass Lowell. This one called against Luka Maziashvili, his third, the sixth for Lowell. So now one more foul will send LIU in the bonus to the line for the one and one. Ty Flowers, man, he's got 17 points on 16 shots. That's not all that efficient. Yeah, he has eight blocks, which is one of seven from three-point land. But if you take those threes away, he's six of nine yep. from inside the arc. That's where he needs to stay. But Lowell forcing him out, he's... He is... Uh, he has to take those shots. And Bershon Cotton, whoa, splits the middle and lays it in. Laid it in to perfection. He got the crowd on their feet, man. Cotton splits the defense as Augusto strips the ball underneath the basket. Augusto came out of nowhere. Substitution for Lowell, number five, Connor Withers is back in the game for number 12, Josh, Josh Gans. So Gans, a starter tonight, sees the bench. He's played 22 minutes, but he's scoreless 0 for 4. Two boards, two steals to his name. Lutet off the inbound, fadeaway, no good. Ballantyne. 
Valentine with the rebound, but it's stripped by Obadiah Noel. A new possession. Three-pointer from Withers. No good. Loose ball again, won by Noel. It's lower basketball. The pass is caught by Lieutenant, but his heel was on the baseline. A sigh of relief for LIU, and everybody in this crowd can take a moment, take a deep breath. It'll be LIU basketball, and Lowell retreats to the half court. LIU currently holds the lead, 55-54, 12 and a half left. Here comes Augusto, up the floor, left side. Raekwon Clark obviously still on the, on the bench with four fouls for LIU. Valentine seeing extended minutes. Ashton Bradley on the floor as well with Julian Bass on the bench. Augusto fighting his way inside. Cross towards the cotton face. Right goes left. But an extra shimmy as he gets called for the travel. It's his second turnover of the half for Cotton. 13th of the game for LIU to Lowell's nine. 12 minutes remaining in regulation. Head coach Derek Kellogg screaming out defensive schemes from the bench, but I don't think anybody can hear it at this loud Steinberg Wellness Center. The triple from Lutet. It's 30 for Lutet. 57 to 55 for Sean Cotton with the answer. LIU back up by one. Cotton now has eight. Fifth assist of the game for Augusto. Lutet. Gets inside, Whoa. Flowers called for the foul after an emphatic spike out of bounds. So Ty Flowers is going to get called for his third, second foul. And another timeout here. You want to talk about a battle, Matt. We got Lutet versus Flowers. Lutet always going at Flowers. Flowers has eight blocks, but it seems like Lutet's trying to get him into foul trouble to take him out of this game. Right there. Could have been block number nine, but he got him on the arm. Luckily for LIU, that's just Flowers' second. I was a bit ahead of myself. I thought he had three. So I thought he was going to be in a little bit of foul trouble, but with 11 and a half minutes left, three fouls to give. Flowers seems to be in good shape. Obviously, Ray Quan Clark, the question mark, with four fouls. I'm sure we'll see him back on the floor at some point, but I don't know how early Garrett Kellogg is going to want to unleash him with those four fouls. It's looking like they're hurting without Clark, man. They need his production. Yes, LIU leads by one, 58 57, 11 and a half to go. But it looks like LIU's offense is a little stagnant. They need Clark to get in there, get his jumper going, and let them pull ahead. I will agree with you that it has been stagnant, but they have made three of their last four shots. And you mentioned earlier at the beginning of this timeout that LIU and Lowell battling, battling Flowers, Lutet, Flowers, Lutet. The difference is that Flowers for LIU has a few other options for Sean Cotton. Has banged two triples. Jay Sean Augusto doing it all. Four points, five assists. So LIU, like I said, has a few options, but it's been all Christian Lutet for UMass Lowell, a game high 30 piece to go along with five boards. He's played all 29 minutes as has Ty Flowers. Few substitutions here. Jermaine Jackson Jr. will check in for LIU. He'll take the spot of Ashton Bradley. As Lutet at the line to shoot two. His first one's good. Another substitution coming for Lowell. Number 12, Josh Gaines is back in the game for Mazzavilli. So Lutet with 31. Shoots one more. The southpaw drills it. And it's a two-point game. Lowell up 60 to 50. Excuse me, one-point game. 59 to 58. 11 and a half to play. Augusto on the right wing. Screen on the left side from Flowers. Now caught. Extra pass to Jackson. Passing it around the perimeter now is LIU. Augusto over to Flowers looking for Cotton in the corner. But he gets it to Augusto. Finds a hole. Brings it back. Kicks out to Cotton. His triple for the right wing. In and out. Almost rolled in off the top of the glass. But LIU still trails by one. Looks like Lowell's forcing LIU to the outside. Six of 22 from three, and there's another missed one from LIU. They were crashing hard in the middle, forcing them outside. Gantz at the top of the key. Finds Blunt. Banks in the pull-up jumper from the free throw line. That'll count just as well. It's a three-point lower lead.
Augusto over to Cotton. Augusto has it yet again. Flowers top of the key retreats. And a bad selection there as he falls shy of the three-pointer. Two on two break. Lutet pulls up from six feet. His shot's no good. Flowers with his 14th rebound to go along with 17 points, eight blocks. Ballantyne puts it on the floor. Cross court to Augusto. Flowers extra pass to Cotton. Pump fake. Back to Flowers at the top of the key. They'll slow it up. Shot clock at 12. Game clock at 10 minutes. Jermaine Jackson's three-pointers long. Overtime in the well with his 10th rebound of the game. He has a double-double. Back to back. 10. Back to back missed threes from LIU. Now shooting just 25%. Lowell knows that, and that's why they're forcing them out there. LIU is now up three, 61-58. LIU was 13 of 44 in their first game of the season for 29.5% from deep. Today, they're 6 of 24. Loose ball won by Blunt. Nice feed to Lieutenant who lays it in. Game high, 34 and climbing. He's a worker, of course, all 31 minutes from Lutete. Augusto and Cotton for LIU. Augusto finds a whole scoop layup blocked, but a foul is called. It'll go against Josh Gantz. He can't believe it. He got all ball, but a little bit of a shove with the lower body. It's number tw- number three, Jashawn Augusto going down hard. You heard it from the crowd, Matt. He hit the deck. As a team tonight, LIU just shooting four for four from the free throw line, whereas UMass Lowell is 11 for 16. That's the difference in this game. Lowell leads by five. Augusto at the line takes his first in and out. First trip to the line for Jay Sean Augusto tonight. And Matt, Lowell just took advantage of the total rebound. Lowell has 36, while LIU has 30. And Augusto misses a pair. Lutet with another board. Eight rebounds to go with those 34 points. 11 of 18 from the field. Nine minutes left to play. Withers off the trail. His lay-in no good. Cotton with the rebound off the feed from Valentine. Cotton out to Augusto now. Back to Cotton, top of the key. Cotton looking for somebody, kicks it out to Jermaine Jackson. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Valentine spot up from straight away. Connects. LIU back within two. 63 61. His second three of the game. Valentine now with six points and four rebounds off the bench. Lutet has the answer from deep. 37 points. He's got flamethrowers coming from his hands, man. He's on fire. He's 5 of 8 from deep. That's the difference in this game. Augusto to Jermaine Jackson. And now Cotton cross court to Flowers. Pump fake. And now gets it to Augusto. Shot clock at 14. Augusto cross court to Valentine. Drags his foot. Lobs it up for Flowers. Lay-in's good. Beautiful move by Flowers. Valentine fought him inside. Opposite hand with the right for Flowers. Right in for two. Flowers. you down three. Flowers with 19. Somebody lost a shoe. It's Jermaine Jackson. As Valentine will bring it up the floor. Jermaine Jackson stops to put his shoe on, so it's a 5 on 4 break. Not LIU with the advantage. And they caught the ball up right away as Cotton just pulls up a desperation three early in the shot clock. Offensive foul called against Lowell. That's Josh Gantz with another illegal screen. We've seen that before today, Mikey. That's his third personal, second moving screen to send it the other way. Timeout. Timeout Lowell, it seems. Lowell calls the timeout, but it will be ruled media. Seven and a half left to play. UMass Lowell leads 66 to 63. We're going to step aside for a quick break here. When we come back, the final seven and a half minutes between LIU and UMass Lowell right here on LIU Sports Radio. Rome once fell, and all great civilizations do. Is America falling? Could we be doing more? Some say it's because we have stopped focusing on learning and understanding what it means to be a good citizen. That's what this podcast is all about. If civics is dead, what happens next? Subscribe to Civics is Dead on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice, or visit wcwp.org slash civics is dead. 
Do you know what was going on in our country when this song played for the first time? Join me, Cindy Schwartz, on Rockin' History every Monday and Wednesday at 11 a.m., where we pair music of the 1960s through the 90s with the events of those years to see how they were intimately connected. That's Rockin' History, Mondays and Wednesdays at 11 a.m. on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is LIU Sports Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. LIU basketball here at the Steinberg Wellness Center downtown Brooklyn. Matt Weinstein, Mikey Domagala here with you. Seven and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Sharks down three to the UMass Lower River Hawks. LIU possession on the floor. Augusto. Jackson Jr. Bats back in the game. Valentine and Flowers at four five. Augusto's pass is tipped, but it remains in bounds. Valentine has it in the corner, fighting his way inside, kicks it out to Julian Bats. Chuck clock at ten. Jackson sizing up Lutet. Screen on the right side. Gets inside, kicks it out. Flowers from the corner. No good. Flowers continues to struggle from deep. He's one of nine. As a team, LIU just 7 of 27 from deep. You live by the three, you, you die, die by, by the three. three. LIU trails by three. Lutet rips it through to the left side. He's met by a double team. His pass deflected by Jackson. But Withers gets it back to Lutet. His three-pointer is no good. Valentine has it. It's tipped out of bounds, but it remains Sharks ball. And that three in the corner, Mikey, from Lutet. He was doubled, heavily contested. He's irate that he didn't get a foul call. He thinks he should be shooting three. Double teamed on both of those possessions. Seems like that's LIU's game plan now. He's got 37 on 12 of 20. They have to stop him to win this game. And now with 640 left to play, LIU might have the answer. Jack Ballantyne checks out. Raekwon Clark back in this game, but he has those four fouls. 19 points for Clark. <laughs> So Clark gets inside, and he gets hacked quickly. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. So Clark at the line. He will shoot two. First time he's at the line today. LIU four of six from the line. Clark taking his first two free throws of the season. And his first one's off back iron. And Mikey, that was the ninth team foul for Lowell, which means every foul moving forward will be a two-shot foul in favor of LIU. Clark's second one rattles in. 20 points on the night from Clark. Two-point game. They need him to start splashing some threes. He, Clark got 17 in the first half. He's been silenced, really, just because you can't unleash him. He has four fouls. He's been on the bench for most of the second half. If he wasn't in foul trouble, we'd see a very different game right now, Matt. LIU still trails by just two. Obadiah Noel almost loses it, kicks it out to Gantz, who answers with the triple. Josh Gantz with his first bucket of the game. And LIU back down by five. Jermaine Jackson over to Augusto at the logo. 5.55 remaining. LIU down 69-64. Flowers, another triple, in and out. He's now one of ten from deep. And a foul is going to be called on LIU. Loose ball goes against Julian Bats of LIU. That'll be his third. Something I don't understand, Matt. LIU is beating them up inside, especially at the beginning of the game. Even the beginning of the second half, they were getting it inside. Now it looks like they're putting up desperation threes, and they're just not getting hit. Flowers, who was incredibly efficient in the first half, really just chucking from deep early in the shot clock. So Noel, his shot blocked by Clark. He gets his own rebound, hands it off to Lutet. He lays it in. 39 points for Christian. As good as a block is, it makes the defense offset. And that's how Lutet came in there for a two. LIU trails by seven now. Augusto, nice feed to Clark. Ducks his defender. Shot is contested. Not blocked, but Clark couldn't get it to fall. And it rolls out of bounds. It's still LIU basketball. They'll inbound underneath with 15 on the shot clock. Seven-point game here. 
Let's see if LIU can get back into it, or they're going to fall behind. This is desperation time for the LIU Sharks. This is UMass Lowell's largest lead of the game, seven points. They lead 71-64. Julian Batts off the inbound at the top of the key. Batts on the left wing. He loses his dribble, coughs it up. Lutet poked out. One away, man. He's doing it all. And Blunt comes up with it. Lutet, heat check, triple. It's good. Christian Lutet, 42 points. And a timeout called by head coach Derek Kellogg of LIU. They trail by 10, their largest deficit of the night. LIU's fallen behind, and it's all because of the three ball. Yeah, they're defending it. But how do you stop Lutet shooting 14 of 22 from the field? When you get a guy shooting that high and that good a numbers map, what do you do? Four, not only 14 of 22, but 6 of 10 from deep. Not to mention the 8 of 9 from the free throw line. Lutet has the hot hand. Obviously, Lowell continues to feed him. Not only is he drilling these threes, he's doing it with hands in his face. That time it was Ty Flowers. In transition, he was the only man to beat. The Flowers had a hand in his face. Lutet drilled it. And Lutet gives up a lot of size to Flowers. That's been the match of all games. And Matt, he's played all 35 minutes. You would think he'd be fatigued. Lutet. You'd think he'd be putting up short shots. No, straight in every single time. Lutet, the grad student out of Silver Springs, Maryland, Stands at just six foot five. He's been banging with Ty Flowers all 90 foot, 94 feet of the floor. Flowers stands at six foot nine. Lutet just getting better as this game progresses. He's doing a job on defense too. He had two steals this half. One great double team, knocked it away, ran in transition. He's doing it all in transition and in the half court. For LIU, Clark with 20, Flowers with 19. Jack Ballantyne with six off the bench. Those are the only bench points for LIU. If you add together Clark and Flowers, his point total is at 39 points. Lutet is still outscoring them by three as one person. 39 of LIU, 64 coming from their star-studded front court duo. 450 left to play. Sharks trail by 10. Jay Sean Augusto kicks it to Bats. Left wing. Flowers straight on the left side. And a blocking foul on the floor called against Lutet. The, U the uh, Riverhawks are low. It is called against Christian Lutet. Actually, the, Josh Gantz is going to be called. That's his fourth foul. And that's the 10 team foul. So LIU will be shooting two. They have to capitalize. They're just five of eight from the line tonight. They're down 10, Matt. Four, 440 left. As Bats they need to get these sneaky baskets in at the free throw line to slowly get into this game. As Bats did hit the first, he'll shoot one more. Bats two of two, uh, now three of three from the line, and he converts on that one as well. Substitution from LIU, number 30, Ashton Bradley. Oh, what's going on here, Bats? As Ashton, Ashton Bats. Bradley's going to come in, but Julian Bats, as he was retreating to go play D, it looked like he tripped over Obadiah Noel's foot. He was backpedaling, and he, he seems to be in a lot of pain. He was clutching his ankle. He walked off the court on his own power, so Bradley coming in four bats. But that doesn't look too get good. Obviously inadvertent, but Julian bats off the floor for LIU spells trouble. Four and a half to play. They trail by eight to low. Lieutenant at the top trying to facilitate. Obadiah Noel. Rips it through, but an off ball foul called against LIU. It goes against Jay Sean Augusto. So the foul on Augusto, just his first, sixth call against the Sharks. Noel off the inbound to Withers. Lutet has it. He's doubled right away. 420 to play. Blunt now has it. Over to Withers. And he's going to get called for the travel. He will not get away. LIU gets bailed out. Seems like LIU's game plan is get the ball out of Lutet's hands. Throwing the double team. They give it elsewhere. Look what happened. Travel. LIU ball. Down eight. Now it was just one possession, but Julian Bath comes back into this game. He seems to be all right. Not favoring his ankle. Defense. So Ashton Bradley will check Defense. out. Looks like Bradley's hurt on the end. He's grabbing his leg. Doesn't seem to be too serious, but he must have tweaked something now in that possession. 
Flowers off the pick and pop. Pump fake. Balls on the floor. Gets stripped by Blunt. He hits the deck and gets it to lose tech. Foul called at half court against Julian Bass. Otherwise, it would have been a 2-1-1 break. LIU would have had the numbers. But Bats with the foul. That's LIU seven. Seemed like a slight shoulder tap. Didn't affect much of, uh, of Lutet's drive. He would have had a wide open dunk, but they called it. I guess that's better. So they didn't get the two points. Julian Bats, that's his third foul. Mikey, the final media timeout of the game here. Three minutes, 55 seconds. LIU trails by eight. We're going to step aside for one final break. You're listening to LIU Sharks basketball right here on LIU Sports Radio. Hi, this is Tony Chiguano, the host of the Monday night edition of The Rock Show. 4F, free format for free. 4F is a naked, no-holds-barred dive into the charted and uncharted musical waters of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughts, and now. So join me Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m. and dive in with us. The water's fine. This is Casey Sherman, Director of Athletic Media Relations, and you're listening to Shark Athletics on LIU Sports Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Coming to you live from the Steinberg Wellness Center, Matt Weinstein, Mikey Tomacala, as the LIU Sharks trail to the UMass Lowell River Sharks, 74 to 66. And there's just 3.55 left to play. So it will be Christian Lutet shooting the free throw. Lutet has 42 points. Converts the first on the one and one. He'll get one more. Lutet converts on both. Nick didn't even move. 44 for Lutet. A game high. And it's back to a 10 point Riverhawk lead. Jay Sean Augusto over to Flowers. LIU has their starters back in this game. Cotton over to Raquan Clark. Banging inside. Lays it in traffic. No good. Gets the rebound and foul. They smothered him in there, Matt. Four defenders on Clark to contest it. He'll be at the line for two. So Clark will shoot two on the night. He has made one trip to the free throw line. He's one for two. Clark gets set for his first, and it's short. LIU has made just one of their last nine field goal attempts. Lowell's on a 10-2 run. LIU running out of time. Clark's second one connects. He has 21 points. Substitution for LIU. Number 30, Ashton Bradley coming in for number one, Julian Bats. So Bats and Bradley continue a little bit of an offense-defense switch. We've seen that the last couple possessions. Adding some size, too, as well. LIU pressing all the way up the floor. Cotton strips the ball. And Lutet comes up with it. Lutet hands it off to the trailer. Right over Flowers. It's open to Ian Noel. He now has 21. You can't forget about him. We've been talking about Lutet for so long. And now Bradley, his three-pointers go. A little bit of get back for Ashton. Bradley off the bench. That's his first bucket after a career night on Tuesday with 21. LIU down eight. Three minutes to go. It's still anybody's game. It's just going to take one or two stops for the Sharks. Loose ball. Flowers picks it up. Outlet fans. To Augusto, he goes up, shuts the contact, lays it in. What a play. He chucked that ball up court. Augusto with the hang time for two. We've seen a lot of that from Flowers this evening. Those long outlet passes, three quarters of the way down the floor. LIU within six. It's just a two-possession game. He checked for Christian Lutet. No good. 15 forward for Ty Flowers. Two and a half to play. High pace, high energy. Each team is going really hard right now on the press and on offense. Augusto floats it up for Clark, but he passes it away. And Lowell will slow things down. 2.15 to play. Obadiah Noel may as well be walking it up the floor. As Lowell has all the time in the world. 
Lutet banging inside. He beats Cotton, who kissed poorly to his left. Christian Lutet, 46 tonight. Unstoppable. 14 of 23. That is extremely impressive. Eight points is the deficit for LIU. Flowers pump fake. One dribble. His three-point attempt, no good. Continues to struggle from deep. One of 11 is Flowers. He's getting open looks. They're just not going down. And, you know, there's nothing else to say. He's missing them. And it's a shame because he's shooting 7 of 10 from inside the arc. As Ashton Bradley gets called for a foul on the floor. That's the eighth team foul for LIU. Obadiah Noel will shoot the one and one. Bats comes in. Rashawn Cotton takes a seat. One and one here for Obadiah Noel. 21 points tonight. The first of a one and one won't fall, but an offensive rebound for Connor Withers. The 6'7 freshman forward. Obadiah Noel over to Blunt. Blunt looking for Lutet, but he's doubled. Five seconds on the shot clock. Lutet a long ways away from the basket. Pulls up. Bottom of the net. The dagger from Christian Lutet. 49 for Lutet. 49 points and 11 point game. Ashton Bradley's three pointer no good. Withers with another rebound. Lutet slows it up. A minute to play, a whistle is blown. It looks like Julian Batts and Connor Withers got tied up at half court. The officials are going to discuss the call here. The foul is going to go against Julian Batts, I believe. An off-ball foul. Derek Kellogg of LIU, I right right now at the scorer's table. Batts can't believe it, but if it stands, which I don't see any reason why it won't, that's the fifth foul for Julian Batts, and he's out of this game. Coach Kellogg, he's not happy. It seemed like a fair call, but it's obvious why he's not happy. His team is down 11 with a minute to go. And Christian Lutet just putting the game into his own hands. 49 points for Lutet. He's played all 39 minutes. I would say that's the most impressive part about his game. Yes, he's shooting way above 50%. But he's played every single minute in this game. An immaculate evening for Christian Lutet, the grand forward for the River Hawks. 49 points. Mikey, what else has he been doing tonight? 49 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. He hasn't even been in foul trouble, man. He's played all 39, just one foul to his name. And his teammate, Noel, 21 points on 8 of 17. He's in foul trouble, but he's been, you know, the perfect partner to the ten, just beating LIU up in the paint. Last season, Christian Lutet scored a career high at Hartford, had seven threes for a career high of 35 points. He has shattered that tonight, 49 points, 16 of 25, 7 of 12 from deep, 10 of 11 from the line. They cannot touch Lutet. And against Massachusetts, they were stopping Lutet. Just 5 of 14 from the field. All right, he had 17 points, 13 rebounds. He was making an impact, but nothing like he's shooting now. 16 of 25. He made an impact, and he only played 27 of the 40 minutes. And now, when, like you said, he's played all 30, to be exact, 38 minutes, 59 seconds in this game. Lutet unstoppable. And his running mate, Obadiah Noel, with 21 points. Noel and Lutet combining for 70 points. 70 of the 83. The thing with Lutet, he's not all that big, man. Six foot five, but he's 200 pounds. He's using his, you know, strong body to get inside. And he's got the shooter's touch. Oh, man. Shot goes up perfectly off the fingertip. Switch. And for the most part, you mentioned he's not that big of a guy. He's been playing. They've been putting Ty Flowers on him on the perimeter, which is a great thing for Lowell. It brings Flowers, Flowers out of the paint. I think the problem with Flowers, Mac, he's getting a little too shot blocking hungry. He's got eight blocks in this game. 
Uh, there's a questionable one, possibly making it nine. He's going for the blocks. He's not necessarily going for the shot contest. And he's not, he's focusing on the blocks, and now the paint is exposed. So 83 to 72, Julian Bats fouled out of the game. So Brandon, excuse me, Jul uh, Jermaine Jackson checks back into this game. He's played 16 minutes. Withers. One and one, first free throw no good, but an offensive rebound for Alan Blunt, and a timeout taken by Pat Duquette, the head coach of Lowell. And now, barring some sort of miracle, this one's all but over. That is true. Listen, I give Ty Flowers a lot of credit. Yeah, eight blocks, a ton of rebounds, 19 points. He's played all 39, but on that last possession, your team's down 11, a minute to go. He failed to box out on the 1-1. One one. They got the offensive rebound, and here we are. Low ball, 56.7 left. And I'll tell you something, Mikey. A lot of that, for a majority of the first half, I believe it was 13 of the 20 minutes, LIU had the lead. 12 of those 13 minutes, right one Clark was on the floor. He got himself into some foul trouble. He sat the rest of the second in the first half. And he missed a decent amount of the second half as well. He does have the four fouls. The offense, it obviously runs differently without Clark. It is much, much less efficient. LIU has been struggled all night really to find their identity on the offensive side of the floor if Clark is on the bench. I would say Clark and Flowers, like I said earlier, they're like Batman and Robin in the beginning. They were doing it all. Take away Clark. Flowers feels he's got to take the whole weight on his shoulders, and that's the reason why they're down 11. Ex exactly. You take Clark off the floor. Flowers then <clears throat> is chucking these shots. A couple of desperation heaves. He's trying to do it all himself. And Lowell has been able to dig in right on Flowers. That off-ball foul is called before the inbound. So another trip to the free throw line for Riverhawk. Not 100% sure who it's going to be at the moment. The foul call against Jay Sean Augusto. That's his, uh, Jermaine Jackson rather, that's his second. And who else but Christian Lutet will go to the free throw line. He's 10 of 11 tonight. That first one is good. A 50 piece for Christian Lutet. 50 of Lowell's 84 points is by Mr. Lutet. He's draining everything. The offense is running through him. LIU tried doubling, couldn't stop it. Lutet, one more, 51, and climb it. 56 seconds left to play. LIU trails by 13. Bradley, a quick trigger. Three-pointers, no good. Lutet for the rebound, his ninth. 46 seconds to play. Lutet, met by Augusto, brings it up the floor. And now Obadiah Noel has it. Augusto switches on to an offensive foul. Obadiah Noel throws an elbow. That's his fifth foul. He's going to be out of this game. Involuntary elbow, but he still hit number three. Augusto on the chest. It's going the other way for LIU. 38 seconds left. Taking the spot of Noel will be Jordan Owens. But Noel finishes this game 21 points, 13 rebounds in 37 minutes. Extremely impressive. If it weren't for Christian Lutet, I'm sure everybody in this building would be talking about oh, Noel. Yeah. Even us, we're talking about Lutet. Noel's getting it done. Augusto gets right to the rim. And a quick timeout called by Derek Kellogg of LIU. 11 point deficit, 33 and a half seconds remaining, a three and a half second shot clock differential. Matt, I understand that timeout. But, you know, 33 seconds left, down 11. I understand you're trying to slow the tempo, but, you know, it's desperation from here on out. You see in the huddle, Derek Kellogg drawing up a quick play. They need a defensive stop. And until there's time on that clock, the LIU Sharks, they just won't quick. They're hungry. They fell in their first game on Tuesday. Barring some sort of miracle, they will fall to 0-2. As Ty Flowers, for the first time tonight, will take a seat. Played 39 and a half minutes. Usman Nadim will check in and play the final 33. Nadim will guard the inbound. Gantz to Lutet. Back to Gantz and a foul's call. It's number three, Deshaun Augusto on the reach. On the big man, number 12, Josh Gantz. And when Lutet had that ball, I'm sure 
you know, he, he was he was holding on to the ball. I'm sure selfish, you know, pretty much have won this game selfishly. I bet he would have liked if he was the one who drew the foul to go to the line to creep up to that double nickel. Right now he has 51. Listen. But Josh Gantz hits the first. I'm sure Lutet's happy he got over the 50-point mark. That's that's incredible. 51 points from Christian Lutet. As Gantz hits both. Even though Gantz is 1 of 6 from the field, 3 of 3. That's number 10, Jackson putting up a almost half court heave. Jump ball between number 21 and 5. UMass Lowell ball. So Lowell with the ball, they can just dribble it out, no shot clock. Low of 87 74, just 23 seconds remaining. No one other than Lutet dribbling it out. As Lowell is victorious. UMass Lowell. Will dribble it out and with their first win of the season. And Mikey. For the first time since 2017, Central Michigan's Marcus Keene had himself a 50-point game at Division I basketball. Christian Lutet with a 51-point performance over the LIU Sharks. I'm not sure how, what kind of shooting percentage that other kid was shooting. All I know is Lutet finished 16 of 25 from the field, 7 of 12 from three-point land. And Matt, he got it done at the line when it mattered. 13, 64% from the field, 58% from three. Christian Lutet, the story of tonight. And Matt, 40 of 40 minutes. This kid didn't take one break, barely even a water break on a timeout. That's it. Played all 40. 87 to 74 in the final, but Mikey, this was not a 13-point game. It wasn't. The towards, towards the bitter end, LIU, they were within five, they were within six. Then Lowell just, you know, not even Lowell, who 10 took advantage, forced this game to a 13-point game. So some final numbers here. Obviously, Christian Lou 10. 51 points, nine boards as well. Obadiah Noel, 21 and 13. For the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell. For LIU, Raekwon Clark, 21. Flowers, 19, 15 boards. Ended up with eight blocks. Played all 40 minutes with the exception of those last 30 seconds of this one. A tough, tough game for LIU, Mikey. Oh, yeah. Flowers is one of the 11 from, from three-point range. He was getting good looks. It was rim most of his shots were rimming out, but some boneheaded plays where he'd get the offensive rebound, run to the three-point line, turn and shoot. That's the reason for his one for 11 three-point range. Talking about Ty Flowers by that, Matt. So LIU will fall to 0-2, still in search of their first victory of the season. The UMass Lowell Riverhawks, now 1-1. One and one. It'll have to be a short memory for LIU. They're back in action this Wednesday night. They will play George Mason University. The final 87 to 74, that'll do it for us here. From LIU Sports Radio, coming here from the Steinberg Wellness Center. LIU Basketball, it's been a production at WCWP Sports. The executive producer was Dan Cox. Production work is done by Chris Buffay. Today's studio operations done by James Waldoff. Technical operations by, Christian, uh, by Griffin Ward. And your studio host was Jason Glickman. For everyone at WCWP, Mikey Domagala sitting next to me. We say thank you for tuning in. 87-74, to the final. LIU falls in game two of their season. We're going to send it back to the music on 88.1 FM at WCWP.org.